to you who has shown us the light. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill among all. We sing out hymns of praise to you. We bless, we worship, and glorify you. We give our thanks to you, our God, for your magnificent glory. Lord King, Heavenly God, Father Almighty, Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who takes away the worldly sin. Have mercy on us, you who take away the sins of the world, you who are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer and have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and to the ages of ages. Grant, O Lord, that on this day we may be kept without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers. Forever and ever your name be praised. Amen. Lord, let your mercy come upon us. For we have placed all our hope in you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Blessed Lord, teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord. Blessed Lord, teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord. commandments. From generation to generation, O Lord, you have been our refuge. I said, Lord, have mercy on me, and heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, unto you I have fled. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. For with you is the source of life, and in your light we shall see light. Extend your loving kindness to those who know you. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God. Holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Salvation to the world has come today. Let us sing to him who is risen from the dead and the author of our lives. For he has conquered death by death. This victory he has given us and his great mercy.
Evlogi son despota. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and forever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop Yerasimos, the Honorable Presbyters, the deacons in the service of Christ, and for all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick and suffering from the COVID-19 virus, that they may be healed by your grace and restored to health, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the thousands of people who have fallen asleep in God as a result of this virus, that they may find mercy and grace in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the families and friends of those who have died, that they might find your peace and consolation in their sorrow and grief, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who care for the sick and suffering during this time of crisis, whether in homes, hospitals, or other care centers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all first responders, the doctors, nurses, emergency medical technicians, police, firefighters, and military, that they might be kept safe and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the scientists, researchers, and all those working to treat and cure this disease, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our leaders, the government, business owners and executives, school and university administrators, and all those whose decisions affect the lives of so many others, that they might be given wisdom and prudence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the elderly and infirm, the lonely and vulnerable, and all those in need of our care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those with limited access to health care because of their poverty and homelessness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who will lose their jobs, businesses, and livelihoods due to the spread of this illness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For we who are now praying this litany, 
that we might pray and act mercifully, serving others in accordance with God's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our all holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord our God, your power is beyond compare, and your glory is beyond understanding. Your mercy is immeasurable, and your love for us is beyond the power of words even to describe. Master, look upon us and upon this holy house in your loving kindness. Grant to us and to those who pray with us the riches of your mercy and compassion. For to you belongs all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and under the ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not forget all that he has done for you. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. The Lord in heaven has prepared his throne and his kingdom rules over all. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Savior, save Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our all holy, pure, blessed, and glorious name, O God, and Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. <laughs> Lord our God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. And do not forsake us who put our hope in you. For yours is the dominion, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and under the ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing to my God as long as I live. Save us, O Son of God, risen from the dead. We sing to you, Alleluia. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. So soni masi atheu, o anastasek necron, salundasi, Alleluia. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, shall rule from generation to generation. Save us, O Son of God, risen from the dead. We sing to you, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and Logos of God, being immortal, you condescended for our salvation to take flesh from the Holy Theotokos, and ever virgin Mary, and without change became man. Christ our God, you were crucified, but conquered death by death. Being one with the Holy Trinity, glorified together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save us. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our all holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, 
the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. <laughs> Lord, you have given us grace to offer these common prayers with one voice. You have promised to grant a request of two or three gathered in your holy name. Fulfill now the petitions of your servants for our benefit, giving us the knowledge of your truth in this world and granting us eternal life in the ages to come. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we offer up glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. This the is the Lord, day Lord, that mercy. the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let the heavens and the earth praise him. Let all things above in heaven rejoice, and let all things below on earth be glad. With all the might and strength of his arm, an eternal deed the Lord did perform. Beneath his feet he has trampled down death by death, and firstborn of the dead has he become. From the womb of hate has, has he delivered, delivered us, and to all the world has granted his great redeeming mercy. Sophia, or thee, come, come let us bow down and worship Christ. Save us, O Son of God, who who sing to you, Alleluia. Ephraim es tota urania, agalia es tota epia, o ti epi se kratos, en vrathi uni af tu o kirios, e pati se to thanaton, ton thanaton, Prototo costo necrone geneto, Echilia sadu erisato himas, Que pare esqueto cosmo, to mega heleos. Angelicos on high were filled with wonderment, Seeing your life in the flesh, how with your body you courageously went out to wrestle with invisible foes and to the demonic cohorts you inflicted serious wounds. Therefore, Athanasios, you received from the Master Christ a wealth of gifts. Holy Father, intercede on our behalf with Christ our God to save our souls. Facing danger at sea and fearful persecution, you became a chosen vessel of the Savior. With your sermons, you enlightened the nations. And to the Athenians you revealed the unknown God, teacher of the nation, Saint Paul the Apostle, protector of us all. Keep us who honor you, safe from every trial and danger. O protection of Christians, unshameable, mediation before the Creator, unchanging. Oh, reject not the prayerful cries of sinners. Instead, come to us, for you are good. Your loving help will bring unto us who are crying in faith to you. 
quicken to intercession and hasten to supplication. You who protect forever, they are tokos, those who honor you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, you dwell among your saints. You are praised by the seraphim with a thrice holy hymn and glorified by the cherubim and worshiped by all the heavenly powers. You brought all things out of nothing into being. You've created man and woman in your image and likeness and adorned them with all the gifts of your grace. You give wisdom and understanding to those who ask and do not overlook the sinner, but have established repentance as the way of salvation. You have made us your lowly and unworthy servants worthy to stand at this hour before the glory of your holy altar and to offer and to do worship and praise. Master, accept the thrice holy hymn also from the lips of us sinners and visit us in your goodness. Forgive all of our voluntary and involuntary transgressions. Sanctify our souls and bodies and grant that we may worship and serve you in holiness all the days of our lives by the intercession of the Holy Theotokos and of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. For you are holy, our God, and unto you and we offer up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord has chastened me sorely. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Let us listen attentively. Brethren, Bless. the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us have no self-conceit, no provoking of one another, no envy of one another. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Look to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Peace be unto you, the reader. And with your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O Lord, save the King and hear us when we call upon you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Shine within our hearts, loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. Open the eyes of our minds that we may understand the message of your gospel. Instill in us also reverence for your blessed commandments. So that having conquered our sinful desires, we may lead a spiritual life 
thinking and doing all those things that are pleasing to you. For you, O Christ our God, are the light of our souls and bodies, and unto you do we offer our glory. Together with your Father who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and forever and under the ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us listen attentively. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. At that time, as Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard him, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, Many will come from east and west and sit at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, be it done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Peace be unto you who proclaims the Holy Gospel. And with your spirit. Again, we bow before you and pray to you, O good and loving God. Hear our supplication. Cleanse our souls and bodies from every defilement of flesh and spirit and grant that we may stand before your holy altar without blame or condemnation. Grant also, O God, progress in life, faith, and spiritual discernment to the faithful who pray with us, that they may always worship you with reverence and love, partake of your holy mysteries without blame or condemnation, and become worthy of your heavenly kingdom. And grant that always, God, and by your power, we may give glory to you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. We who miss No one, child, by will and desires and pleasures is worthy to approach. And to you, the King of glory, to serve you. The cherubim represent the cherubim. We sing to the life creating.
comes a visitor born by my Represent the chairman. Oh,
May the Lord our God remember all of us in his kingdom, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Escorted by angelic hosts, escorted by angelic hosts, Hallelujah. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. Grant for a Christian end to our lives peaceful, without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Commemorating our all holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of your people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence, that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us, with the gifts here presented, and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and forever and under the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with you all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. I love you, Lord. Father, you Son, my Lord, my and Holy and my Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence and inseparable. The doors guard the doors. Wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God. 
Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and on earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe. Let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. Mercy, peace, the sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is proper and right. It is proper and right to sing to you, bless you, praise you, worship and give thanks to you in all places of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable, beyond comprehension, invisible, existing forever and yet always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us into being out of nothing. And when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all things that we know and do not know. For blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy, which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, by the Kerfim and the Seraphim, six wing, many eyed, soaring with their wings, Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of all, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Together with these blessed powers, O loving Master, we also proclaim and say, you are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the entire plan of salvation for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broke it, and then gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. 
for the remission of sin. Amen. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Amen. Remembering, therefore, this command of our Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, <laughs> the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second and glorious coming. Once again, we offer to you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood, and we ask, pray, and beg you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. Make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 That these gifts might be for those to partake of them, for vigilance of the soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer to you this spiritual worship for those who rest in the faith, our forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, teachers, for every righteous spirit brought to perfection in faith. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the veiled Torcos and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly right to bless you, Veiled Torcos, ever blessed, most pure, and Mother of God, more honorable than the cherubim. And beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim. Without corruption, you gave birth to God the Logos. We magnify you, the truth and the Logos. Stephanos, the priest, Caritas, the bishop, and Erasmus, the bishop. Grant them rest, O God, with the light of your confidence, forevermore shines upon them. Again, we ask you, Lord, remember all Orthodox bishops who rightly teach the word of your truth, all presbyters, all deacons in the service of Christ, and everyone in holy orders. We also offer to you this spiritual worship for the whole world, for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, for those living in purity and holiness, and for all those in public service. Permit them, O Lord, to serve and govern in peace, that through the faithful conduct of their duties, we may live peaceful and serene lives in all piety and holiness. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop Yerasimus, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind, and all your people, and all the people. Remember, Lord, the city in which we live, every city and country, and the faithful who dwell in them. Remember, Lord, those who are traveling. Remember the sick, the suffering, and the captives, granting them your protection and salvation. Remember, Lord, those who do charitable work, who serve in your holy churches, and who care for the poor. Send your mercies upon us all. And grant that with one voice and one heart 
we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and under the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Having commemorated all the saints, again and again in peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts here offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and mystical altar, as an offering of spiritual fragrance. May in return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. We entrust to you, loving Master, our whole life and hope, and we ask, pray, and beg you, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of our sins, the forgiveness of our transgressions, communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Amen. kingdom come, thy Amen. will be done, on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be Let us bow our heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. We give thanks to your invisible King. By your infinite power, you created all things. And by your great mercy, you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They are bowed not before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the needs of each of us. Sail with those who sail. Travel with those who travel. And heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, here is your holy dwelling place, and from the glorious throne of your kingdom, you are enthroned on high with the Father, and are also invisibly present among us. Come and make us holy, that your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand, and through us to all your people. Proscome Taia Tisai Break match of the Holy Spirit. One is broken is holy. and distributed, broken, One but not divided. And is forever eaten, Jesus yet is never consumed. But he makes holy Christ all those who partake of him. Jesus Christ conquers all fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen
I believe, Lord, and confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy on me and forgive my transgressions, whether voluntary or involuntary, committed in word or deed, knowingly or unwittingly, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake in your pure mysteries for remission of sins and for everlasting life. Amen. You have enticed me, O Christ, and I yearn for you. By your divine love, you have transformed me. Consume my sins in spiritual flame, and let me be filled with the sheer delight of you, O gracious Lord, that rejoicing I may magnify both your advents. How shall I, so unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal feast, my clothing will disgrace me, since it is not a wedding garment. Then I shall be bound and cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness. Instead, may I receive them for the cleansing and sanctification of both soul and body, and as a pledge of the future life and your kingdom. It is good for me to cling to my God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. For I will not speak of this mystery to your enemies. Brothers Nor will and I give Christ, you a kiss as did Judas, but oh, like the thief I confess you. Brothers and sisters, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. We welcome all of our guests and our visitors this morning. We're glad to have you with us. We respectfully remind you that the sacrament of Holy Communion is reserved for those who are baptized or chrismated Orthodox Christian in good sacramental standing with the Church, who are properly prepared through fasting, prayer, and the sacrament of Holy Confession. Therefore, if you're not Orthodox, if you're not properly prepared, we would respectfully ask that you remain in the pews during Holy Communion. But then at the end of the service, if you wish, you may come forward to receive a blessing from the priest. There's further information in the cards in the pews. The ushers will guide you as you come forward. We ask you just before communion, please remove your mask completely. Do not put it underneath your chin because we need to put the red cloth underneath your chin. So take it off completely. Then we put the red cloth. Please tilt your head back and then the priest will drop the Holy Communion into your mouth. Please do not kiss the spoon or kiss the red cloth. And then you proceed to receive your undethro, then you can put on your mask on. Thank you. Αμαρτίας μου περικαθαρεί. Ανάσταση Χριστού Θεάσή μου, ως κινήσου με Άγιον Κύριον της Μόνα, το Σταυρό Σου Χριστέ, ως κινήμα και μηδιά σου, ανάσταση μου, ως κινήσου με Άγιον Κύριον της Μόνα, σίγουρα το Θεό σου, μάνα αυτό σου, το όνομά σου, το όνομά σου, με δόξα πάντα σε Χριστή, ως κινήσου με του Χριστού Αγία Ανάσταση, του γαρίθα του Σταυρών όλο το κόσμο, για παντός ευλογούντας τον Κύριον, Υμνούμε την ανάσταση αυτού του σταυρού, βαρυπημένες μας να το θάνατο όλες.
actually, I'll do it, it's okay. With the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Seems the body and blood. Taste and see the how good the Lord is. Alleluia. 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 Forgiveness of I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever on my lips. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia. 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 The servant of God, My soul shall glory in the Lord. Let them eat here and rejoice. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia, 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 I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Receives the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life and life and life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Approach the Lord and be enlightened and your face shall never be shamed. Jesus Christ for the forgiveness and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia. 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 Keep your tongue from wickedness and your lips from deceitful speech. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia. 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 The servant of God. Turn away from evil and do good. Peace and pursue it. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia. 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 The servant of God. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he will save the humble in spirit. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Alleluia. The servant of God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord will redeem the souls of his servants, and none of those who hope in him shall be lost. The servant of God. Sophia receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. The servant of God, Margaret, receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life everlasting. The servant of God. Alleluia. Receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life. The servant of God, Dikea. Receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life everlasting. Jesus Christ. The servant of God. The servant of God. Receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life everlasting. Jesus Christ. The servant of God, Gregory, receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior God. Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life everlasting. Receives the body of God. The servant of God, Steve, receives the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and life everlasting. O oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. We have seen the light, the true light, and have received the heavenly spirit. We now have found the true faith by our worshiping the undivided trinity. Who has saved, saved us? Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. Let our mouths be filled with your praise, O Lord, that we may sing of your glory. You have made us worthy to partake of your holy mysteries. Keep us in your holiness, 
that all the day long we may meditate upon your righteousness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We give thanks to you, loving Master, the benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in the right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all your saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we offer up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray, Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who put their trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. And do not forsake us who put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights, to you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the Christ name God, of the you have Lord. Of the Lord and prophets. You have fulfilled all of the Father's plan for our salvation. Ages. Fill our hearts with the joy and gladness. Always now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and to the ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love, always, now, and forever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, is a good, loving, and merciful God. Have mercy on us and save us. Through the intercession of his most pure and holy mother, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, by the power of his precious and life giving cross, the protection of all the angelic powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable, glorious prophet and forerunner, John the Baptist, the oh, prayers of the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, especially St. Paul the Apostle, whose name our church bears, of the holy, glorious, and triumphant martyrs of our holy and God-bearing Father, John Chrysostom, whose liturgy we have celebrated this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of Saint Athanasius, the founder of the monasteries of Maranathos, Saint Elizabeth, the new martyr, and Saint Sergius of Radonez, whose memory we celebrate this day, and of all your saints. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated.
So good morning, everyone. Good morning. So let me make a few announcements. Um, first of all, let me wish you a happy July 4th weekend. Um, and I need to look through the bulletin quickly to see what announcements there are. But in essence, as you may know, the virtual coffee hour is now at 12 noon. And so a little bit later, uh, we'll have the chance to visit with each other. Um, you might also know that this week we're continuing to do everything over Zoom. And so praying the Psalms is Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. in the morning. And you know that coffee chat is again Monday through Friday at 3 o'clock. Uh, the Women's Study Fellowship uh, actually is going to meet tomorrow night um, at 7 o'clock over Zoom. And then choir chat is every Tuesday. Uh, the reopening team meeting is on July 7th, our parish council meeting as well. Uh, women's Bible study is every Thursday at 10 a.m. And the men's fellowship is Thursday, uh, July 16th, uh, so 10 days from now at 7.30. And our Kinonia Bible study uh, is again by phone access only, and it'll meet this coming Thursday. Uh, in the bulletin you have um, all of the different um, accounts that you need to tie into uh, in order to, to participate in those Zoom meetings. Um, what else? What else? Um, well, one announcement that I'll make is that next Sunday, uh, by next Sunday, beginning tomorrow actually, uh, we're going to be preparing the church uh, for the installation of new mosaics. And so, uh, unfortunately, all you guys sitting in the very back pews, we're going to lose those pews uh, Monday and Tuesday of this week. And in fact, uh, by next week, there should be scaffolding in the church, in the very back of the church. And that scaffolding is there uh, to allow the preparation of the walls uh, to receive the mosaics of the Ascension and also of Pentecost. So ascension will be on that side, the ascension of the Lord Jesus into heaven will be on that side, and Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit, will be on that side in the back, much as we have the baptism and the transfiguration of Christ up here. I mentioned, I think, uh, certainly in your monthly bulletin, I made the announcement that uh, the ascension icon is actually already here. Uh, it is stored in large, very heavy, uh, crates in the parish center next door. And what we're hoping is that this month uh, we will have finished preparing the walls to receive the mosaic. And then afterwards in August, if all things go according to plan, uh, we'll have the gentlemen who are the installers come from Italy and begin the process of installing the mosaics in the back of the church. So uh, we'll see how all of that goes. Uh, but the very first step is going to start next week, uh, this coming week, by uh, removing some pews, and then after that, putting also um, some scaffolding up. So, anyway, um, let's talk about some things this morning with regards to uh, at least the epistle reading, and also one of the saints that we remember today. So... If you listen carefully to the epistle reading today, um, it lists what are called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Nine characteristics or nine traits, if you will, that a maturing Christian begins to develop within themselves thanks to the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, one of the best Sundays uh, that I can recall from my preaching here uh, at St. Paul's occurred some years ago when we were talking about the Holy Spirit the week after Pentecost and what the Holy Spirit's, how do I say, what his purpose for being in our lives really is. And one of the questions I asked that morning was, does anybody here know when St. Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit in his letter to the Galatians, what are what is the fruit of the Spirit that he lists there. And of course, I was walking up and down in the center aisle, and no one seemed to know. And then all of a sudden, 
in the back. Nicholas Karakos, in elementary school, raised his hand. And this was a long time ago, obviously, in elementary school. Um, he raised his hand and he said, Father, I know the answer. So I went running to the back of the church where he was seated. And of course, he listed them all off, all nine traits in today's scripture reading that Eve read earlier today. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Most people say gentleness when they translate it, but actually it's the word for meekness and self-control. Anyway, Nicholas rattled these all off, and I was really amazed, uh, very happily so. And what I discovered was that at the Lutheran Christian school he was attending at that time, uh, because he had been singled out by his teacher uh, to receive a Fruit of the Spirit Award for kindness, uh, he had actually gone and memorized uh, every one of those traits that are born in us of the Holy Spirit. So he knew the answer. God bless him. So this morning I want to talk a little bit about that fruit of the Spirit and what we need to understand about the fruit of the Spirit in our own lives. And then I want to talk about one saint that we remember today, Saint Elizabeth the New Martyr. If you come into the church after all the mosaics are put up, Saint Elizabeth the New Martyr, together with Saint Catherine, are you listening, Catherine? Saint Catherine, and Saint Barbara, and Saint Irene Christovalantu will be in the back adorning our church with their presence in mosaic. So I want to talk a little bit about Saint Elizabeth the New Martyr because we believe that all of the saints um, actually uh, manifest the fruit of the Spirit in their own lives. And today is her feast day. It's the day on which she was executed for being a Christian in Russia. Now, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, we read from Galatians chapter 5, we began in verse 22. But I want to read the first verses, two verses before that, because the point to listing the fruit of the Spirit is to contrast the fruit of the Spirit with the works of the flesh, St. Paul says. And he lists the works of the flesh first. So here's what he says. The works of the flesh are obvious. He says adultery, sexual immorality, pornia is the Greek word there. It's the word we get pornography from. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. So notice here that the works of the flesh, that that's plural. Notice that the flesh is something mortal, that the flesh is transitory. Things that produce murder and wars and violence of all kinds in human life. Doesn't that list read like a lot of stuff going on in America right now, in our country, in our culture, in our society right now? Hatred, discord, fits of rage, selfish ambition. Um, we are polarized politically into different factions who often speak and act in hatred towards one another. We see protests. Some are peaceful, some are not. And they lead to fits of rage and violence. And too many of our leaders are more concerned with selfish ambition than with healing our wounds. Our society and our culture at the present time exemplifies everything that St. Paul writes about, the works of the flesh in all of their destructive power. But because we've been given the Holy Spirit, because we've received the gift of the Holy Spirit when we're baptized and chrismated, the fruit of the Spirit... Notice it's singular, is what we as Christians are called to exemplify in our lives. Christians in that sense, we don't share the values of the world around us. We have a different spirit living in us and guiding us. What do I mean by that? For example, Christians are not to be motivated by selfish ambition, one of the works of the flesh. Jealousy or envy 
in anything we do. Christians do not hate anybody, but are commanded by the Lord Jesus to love even our enemies. And in case we forget here at St. Paul's, it's actually up in the dome of our church. And if you're on this side, I can look at that particular scripture verse from St. Matthew from here. Love your enemies. So we're called to do even that. So we're not to hate anybody, not even the people who hate us. So I want to look at the phrase for a minute, fruit of the Spirit, now that we have an idea a little bit about what the works of the flesh are. Let's see what that word fruit implies for our spiritual lives. So, um, <laughs> first, fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, meekness, and the rest, they do not come from us. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, and Paul writes that, he is saying that it's produced by the Holy Spirit. That all of these different attitudes, characteristics, and traits, they come from the Holy Spirit. They don't come in a certain sense from us. We have to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit and let him work in us to get rid of the works of the flesh. We have to be willing to empty ourselves in order to be filled. We need to be empty of our rage and envy and jealousy, our selfish ambition, our hatred for anyone. We have to be empty of all those things in order to be filled with the peace and the joy, the kindness and meekness and love that only the Holy Spirit offers. So that's the first thing. Fruit of the Spirit means it doesn't come from us. I cannot just simply say, on Thursday morning, I'm going to get up, and by God, I'm going to be filled with kindness. It does not work that way. We have to open ourselves to the presence of the Holy Spirit and be willing to let him work in us. Not demand, but let him work in us. It does not come from willpower. It comes from spirit power. So that's the first thing. Second, when you look at the word fruit and you think about an apple or an orange or anything like that, a lemon, you know that the fruit of the spirit will not ripen in our lives overnight. Fruit needs time to grow. So just as it takes time for an apple tree to produce apples, so the fruit of the Spirit takes time to ripen in us. The Christian life is about growth over time, digging out the weeds in our lives, not, as St. Paul says, quenching the Spirit and his work in our lives. You have to remember, God will not work in us if we don't want him to. We have to want him. We have to desire him. And it's possible for us by our coldness of heart, to actually grieve the Holy Spirit, St. Paul writes in Ephesians, by rejecting him and his work to make us more and more like Jesus Christ. So let's look briefly at each one of those uh, traits, the fruit of the Spirit. Notice that love is mentioned first. It's mentioned first because God is love. And again, in case you forget, on the back wall of the loft here, it's emblazoned in mosaic. And it's a quote from John's first letter. Love is the aim and the goal of the Christian life. That, again, is above the entryway to the church in Mosaic. Love is first, because as St. Paul writes in his letter to the Colossians, every other virtue, it binds together in a perfect harmony. Love is actually why we can speak of the nine traits described here by St. Paul as fruit. Love, as you know, or at least I hope you know, is not a feeling. Love is a verb. When we love, we act in a certain way. Love is patient. Love is kind. Not rude, not arrogant, not self-seeking, not easily angered, does not envy. Again, on the other side of the loft are those words from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his very first letter to the Corinthians. And if you listen carefully to how St. Paul describes love there, you can see how these characteristics of love are the exact opposite of the works of the flesh. Love always protects, always hopes, always perseveres, always rejoices in the truth. And when we act in these ways, we're imitating God himself. Joy 
Chara in Greek. Joy is more than just happiness. Happiness is about what happens in your life. It's got the same root. Happiness depends on what's happening in our lives at any given moment. We go to Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, to find the kind of happiness that the world offers. But joy is something more. It's something different. It's something richer. It's something deeper. And joy is a fundamental stance of, to life that's born of gratitude. One of the words that we use to describe the liturgy is Eucharistia. And the root of that word, normally translated as thanksgiving or gratitude, is actually this word, chara, charis. To be grateful is to be joyful. We receive all of life as a gift from this God for which we're grateful, and it forms the basis for joy as a fruit of the Spirit working in us. Now, the third thing is peace. The world doesn't offer us much in the way of peace. All you have to do is turn The world cannot offer peace to us because it does not know the one who is peace. Our God, St. Paul writes, is the God of peace. It's the peace that only Jesus can give. It's the peace that's so deep, so rich, that St. Paul will write, that peace surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that's born of prayer in the Holy Spirit. The fourth gift is usually translated as patience. But the Greek word makrothimia is more than just patience. It actually should be translated as long-suffering. Long-suffering is the long and patient endurance of injuries, insults, adversities. On Great and Holy Thursday night, when we remember the crucifixion of Christ and we read 12 gospel readings, each one about the crucifixion of Christ as he's hanging on the cross, at the end of each gospel reading, we sing, Glory to your long-suffering, O Lord. Glory to you. In Greek, doxa ti makrothimia. So it's the same word that we sing after each one of those gospel readings that St. Paul lists here as a fruit of the Spirit. And we are called to be like Jesus. Long-suffering springs from love, as the apostle says. For love is long-suffering, patient, and kind. And he also writes that we as Christians are to be long-suffering with one another in love. Kindness, Christotitos, is to be gracious, polite, and courteous. Yes, that's true, all of that. But even more, it's to do what's good and right and true even to those who are not good themselves. Jesus says, do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good only to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. But love your enemies, do good to them, and then you will be children of the Most High God, because God is kind even to those who are ungrateful and wicked. The sixth fruit is goodness, agathosini. Goodness is a quality that Jesus attributes to God. He says, uh, you may remember the story. A man, a young man, comes to Jesus and asks him the question, teacher, what must I do? Good teacher, he calls him. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus' immediate response is, no one is good but God alone. Now, goodness is a quality of true life, real life authentic life in God, to do what is good and to have a good resolve and a disposition to do what's good, right, and true, no matter what the cost. That kind of fruit in us is an imitation of God, who Matthew's Gospel says makes his sun rise on evil and the good and sends rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. St. Paul will write in Romans, don't be overcome by evil, overcome evil by good. The seventh fruit is faithfulness. What does it mean to be faithful? In the creed, you know, we say that we believe in God. We don't say that we believe that there is a God, but we believe in one God. Between belief that God exists and belief in God, there's a crucial difference. For me to say that someone or something exists 
Doesn't mean much if that belief has no practical effect on my life. To be faithful means that we have a living relationship with God and that that relationship, that relationship with him is real. God relates to us not as a thing but as a person. When we say to someone, I believe in you, I believe in you, it means I trust you, I rely on you, I love you. Faithfulness is about that kind of love. It's not the supposition that something exists, but that someone is there. And that someone for us is God working in our life. So to be faithful then is to know God not as an abstract principle, not as some kind of formula that we bring into our life whenever we need him, but to know him and to want him on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, most translations translate praotis as gentleness. But actually, the word praotis means meekness. Now, there was a confusion recently in one of our Bible studies because someone felt that meekness means to be timid. Meekness does not mean to be timid. Meekness does not mean to be a doormat. Timid, according to the dictionary, means a lack of courage or confidence. Timid means being easily frightened. But that's not what this word means. In the Old Testament, Moses is described as being very meek, more so than any other man who lived on the face of the earth. The Bible says that about Moses, that he was meek, more meek than anybody who had ever lived at, to that point. And yet I don't think any of us would think of Moses as timid. We would certainly not think of him as being afraid, easily afraid. Moses was the great leader of the people of Israel. Moses was the one who was willing to spend 40 years in the desert leading an ungrateful people to their covenant at Sinai. Moses was not timid. He didn't lack courage, and he wasn't easily frightened. Meekness, praotis, in classical Greek, that word was used to describe the bit that you put in a horse's mouth in order for the rider to be able to guide the animal. So to be meek is to put all of our power, all that we have, all that we are, at God's disposal, to let him direct our life. And when we let him direct our life, we're not timid at all. Not at all. The final fruit is self-control and gratia. Now to exercise self-control is to discipline ourselves, set boundaries, and rule over our own actions. What's a lack of self-control, right? It means that our lives are often misdirected and our lives lead to the, free, to the free reign, forgive me, of fleshly, worldly patterns that end up exercising control over us. Think of an addiction as an example of what it means to be lacking in self-control. Something outside us controls us. Think of all the crazy behaviors and addictions that are destructive to ourselves and those around us. Self-control is essential to what it means just to be a human being, much less a Christian. So the fruit of the Spirit are those qualities that are produced in us over time as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and we allow the Holy Spirit to flow into every nook and cranny of our being and allow him to begin reshaping us in the pattern of Christ so that we can bear fruit as human beings, fruit that is life-giving both to ourselves and to others. And that's what we think happens in the lives of the saints. They increasingly allow the Holy Spirit to be active in their lives and produce that fruit. Now, I mentioned to you I wanted to talk about St. Elizabeth, the new martyr. And I do want to talk to her because, about her, excuse me. I do want to talk about her because today is her feast day and because she will be one of the saints who adorns the mosaics of our church. You may know those of you who went with me to Israel, those of you who went with me to Russia, you may recall in Israel, we venerated her relics there. There is a very famous church that is on the slopes 
outside the city of Jerusalem. And it's a very famous Russian church, and she's buried in that church. She's buried in that church because before she and her husband, how do I say this? Before her husband was assassinated, the two of them went to Israel on a pilgrimage and pledged to have that church built. And after she was murdered, executed, and we'll talk about that in a moment, she wanted always to be buried in that church, in the Holy Land, on the Mount of Olives, overlooking Jerusalem. And eventually, that was done. So, in the world, she was known as Grand Duchess Elizabeth. She was the sister of the last Tsarina, the sister-in-law of Tsar Nicholas II. And when she got married, she was considered to be one of the most beautiful women in Europe at the time. To make a long story very short, in 1905, her husband, who was the uncle of the Tsar, was assassinated in Moscow. He was the governor, maybe today we would say the mayor of Moscow and the surrounding regions. He was assassinated with a bomb placed beneath his carriage and literally blown to bits. So in 1905, after her husband was assassinated, she went to the jail cell in which his assassin was held prisoner. And she went and she said, I forgive you. My husband forgives you. We forgive you in the name of Jesus. And she left him a Bible, but he was not too interested in the Bible, was not too interested in his visit from her. And eventually, even though she pleaded for his life, allow him to live, in the end, justice was pursued in the courts in Moscow at that time, and he was executed. But she forgave him, and she pleaded for his life, even though he had murdered her husband. By 1909, four years later, she had sold everything she owned in terms of jewelry and riches, and she used the money to buy a piece of property in what in those days would have been considered one of the slums of Moscow. And she wanted to establish a convent there, but not a convent where all the nuns are just kind of kept inside. She wanted to establish a convent that had a mission to the world, a mission to the surrounding area in Moscow. And she established there a hospital, an orphanage for girls, food kitchens, and much more. She was amazing, as a matter of fact, and she was trying very hard to combine intense prayer with social outreach, much as St. Basil did in the fourth century. There was a dining hall where 300 meals were served daily to Moscow's poor. Her vision was to begin a religious community made up of women from every social strata which would merge the ideals of Martha and Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus and being active at the same time. She was trying to do what one bishop said. She was to be not of this world and at the same time to live and act in the world in order to transform it. That was the foundation upon which she built her convent. There are lots of stories about her. People began to gravitate towards her, seeking spiritual direction. I'll mention just one story. After the revolution was already underway in February of 1917, because she was a member of the royal household and an Orthodox nun to boot, a mob broke into the convent, a communist mob, and said, we want to arrest this German spy, this grand duchess. We want to arrest her. And she came out. She faced them all. And she said, well, if that's what you want, I guess I have to go with you. But she said, you know, I have a custom. I never leave the convent. I never leave the monastery 
unless I go into the chapel and pray first. And so she turned and she walked across the garden into the church with the whole mob of people following her. As many as could crowd into the small building followed her there. And before the altar, she knelt, and her nuns came and knelt around her, weeping. But Elizabeth didn't weep. She prayed for a while, crossed herself, then stood up and stretched out her hands to the silent, staring mob. I'm ready to go now, she stated. But not a hand was lifted to take her. And this is a description that an American woman wrote who was present at this event in a book that was published way back in 1921. Not a hand was lifted to take her. What no police force in Russia could have done with those men that day, her perfect courage and humility did. It cowed and conquered hostility. It dispersed the mob. That great crowd of blood-mad men went quietly home, even leaving a guard to protect the convent. It's possibly the only spot in Russia today where absolute inviolability may be said to exist for any member of the hated bourgeoisie, as the Bolsheviks call the intellectual classes. But of course, that didn't last long. By 1918, she was already captured, prisoned, taken out, and eventually on July 5th, she and a number of others were thrown down basically a mine shaft and then grenades were dropped down into the mine shaft to kill everybody that had been thrown down there, including Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth lived for several hours and could be heard singing hymns by her executioners. Now, she died in that mine shaft, but later, in 1921, three years later, her body was recovered by the White Army. Remember, at this time, there's civil war in Russia between whites and reds. That part of Russia was taken by the White Army. They recovered her body, and eventually she was taken to Jerusalem, to the Church of St. Mary Magdalene, on the Mount of Olives overlooking Jerusalem, and she was buried there in that church. So we celebrate her memory today. And in 1992, she was canonized as a saint, and in 2004, her relics were transported around Russia, much as those of you who went with me to Russia know the relics of St. Nicholas were there. And in 2004, her relics toured Russia, and they were venerated by an estimated 10 million people. Amazing. But I want you to understand who this woman was, because it's important that you know her story, because she will be one of the saints that decorates our church. God bless you all. It's so good to be able to look into your eyes and to see you here. Good morning, everyone.